On a high hill in the middle of Tallahassee, Florida, sits the San Luis Mission, a reconstructed Spanish mission originally built in 1656. Prior to the Spanish arrival, for several hundred years, the site had been the capital of the Appalachian Indians, a sprawling community of several thousand individuals. Because before the Spanish um, kind of coerced the Appalachian into the Catholic faith, they recognized the Appalachian as a very um, dominant tribe in Florida. Built in 1990, you enter the reproduction through this beautiful carved door into this gorgeous reception hall. The entry hall hosts a gift shop and a museum. So here we have a huge horse console in which they were ornately carved with depictions on, um, I believe this one has to do with some of the gods that the Appalachian worshiped. On the spacious grounds, a half dozen buildings give the flavor of what life was like living in the mission in the 1600s. The grounds are staffed by actors in period costumes. We all are given um, people that really lived here back in the time period to research and to try and live as they would have lived. So I portray a woman whose name was Juana Rodriguez and she was a, a farming woman, which is actually something that I am in my personal life, so <laughs> it's not very uh, foreign to me. Constructed by the Appalachians, the impressive mission church at St. Louis was equal in size to the main church at St. Augustine. During excavation, this 300-year-old crystal cross was found on the church floor. The most impressive building on the grounds is the council building. The fact that this council house and the church are facing one another shows a, a mutual respect that we probably haven't seen in any other mission colonial sites like this. At 120 feet in diameter, the council building could accommodate up to a thousand people. Yeah, I'm in the council house and um, so what we're in right now is basically the Appalachian natives typical every day go in and out structure it's the hubbub of their community it's the most probably the most one of the most used buildings on site at the end of the mission period there were around 1500 Appalachian natives living here so here you're going to see mostly food items such as um, you have rabbit pelts you have deer which was very important to them you have acorns, which they would grind up into acorn flour. Of course, you have to process them correctly or they're toxic. Squash. You have the infamous casino or black drink, uh, the casino tea. And this is something they would use in their rituals. And it's um, no North America's only naturally caffeinated tea leaf. Then you have other pumpkin squash beans. So the Appalachian had the three sisters, which are corn, beans, and squash and that were their staple crops. They were huge into agriculture, and those are the three staple crops that they grew in the surrounding area for miles and miles and miles. And they would not only feed themselves, but St. Augustine, parts of Cuba, uh, Mexico, and sometimes even Spain, depending on what they're sending. So you're gonna see mostly food objects. Of course, here's some turkey feathers. Um, you have uh, hickory nuts in here, which are very hard to crack open, but the meat's pretty good inside. You have other things like tools on this over here, which is, um, this is a palm hair. So when you go to palm fronds, you'll see hair at the bottom. And this is one of the many ways they make rope to tie the council house together. And then here you have a fire starter kit, which you would just put on and loop it. And I can't do it because they would spark and they don't allow that to happen in here. One of the buildings on the grounds is a constructed Spanish residence home. By 1704, when the mission ended, there were 1,400 Spanish and Mesitos living here. Mesita is a woman who is both Native American and Spanish. Most of the furniture was locally handmade, with textiles and porcelain imported from Europe. Outside of the home, they have an herb garden typical of the time. 
Um, so here is the pre-Spanish hoe for farming. They used shells. And here is the post-Spanish, um, which they replaced it with metal. Tell me about your blacksmith shop. Well, I am Santiago del Campo, master blacksmith. I was sent along with my journeyman Diego from our home forge in Havana, Cuba. So I see you make nails. Well, we work for carpenters. Kitchenware, this is a trivet for cooking on. The clay cook pot will sit on top of here and the women will build their fire off to the side and then rake coals from the fire underneath the pot. And when they do it that way, they have very close control over the temperature. Yeah, just enough coals to keep it hot. Well, more coals if you want it really hot. I guess. <laughs> Fewer if you just want it to, to stay warm. Yeah. What you're seeing on the wall right there is mostly tools, punches and chisels that are, are used by the blacksmith. The rituals that are still taking place, um, the ball games, you have uh, flint napping and family and friend gatherings, basket making, pottery making, uh, all these things going on in here during the day. Here you also have the infamous ball game ball, which they would play and it's similar to football and lacrosse and hacky sack and all these things. And it's just buckskin filled with um, clay. A strong fort is necessary in new settlements. This served not only as safety for the Spanish against tribal attacks, but also against the English. That large white building up there is a blockhouse. It's a fortified building, which means that the walls are thick and strong enough to withstand musket fire and arrows. And the fence that surrounds it is a palisade. The, uh, what we have here is basically three components. Uh, the fort here has been reconstructed to look at as close as we can make it to as it appeared in 1703. So that means we have a, uh, a dry moat, which is that ditch that runs mostly all the way around. Uh, you have the palisade wall, and then inside you have the blockhouse, well, we call the Casa Fuerte in Spanish. The blockhouse is two stories tall with a solid roof. On the roof we have four four-pounders, those are small cannon. On the second level it's an open floor plan for storage or for uh, or a, uh, a billet area. Uh, downstairs we have a mess hall, we have more storage. This building is basically the, uh, the headquarters for the Spanish regulars who are stationed here. Uh, in 1703, there's about, 50, uh, about 45 to 50 Spanish regulars who, who are stationed here. They come all the way out from the Castillo de San Marcos and St. Augustine. So this is basically their operation headquarters. This is the only fort, this is the only garrison in Apalachee province. So. Uh, I said four, four, four pounders on the roof. We also have two six pounders, um, too heavy to go up on the roof, so they're uh, basically going to be used or deployed on the ground in one of these bastions. After less than 50 years, English incursions into Florida necessitated the Spanish abandoning the mission. The land went into private hands until this reconstruction began 30 years ago. Please subscribe to my YouTube videos and check out my books for sale on my website.